News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. Hello, very good evening, and a warm welcome to Newsline Live. Now then, um, with uh, Sri Lanka and its uh, wonderful geographical position, uh, events around the world uh, sometimes tends to impact on our uh, little space in in the world, and. Uh, one of those, of course, is the um, arrival or the, the scheduled arrival of the uh, Chinese satellite tracking vessel, um, scheduled for the 11th of August. And um, that has uh, put India into some form of uh, tailspin. Uh, they're not happy, put it that way. Then, of course, we have uh, uh, another event that's happening, um, although. Uh, Nancy Pelosi has actually now left Taiwan, uh, but her arrival in Taiwan uh, made our other friends, China, um, rather unhappy. So we thought we'll have a foreign policy analyst here uh, to uh, sort of throw some light on why there is so much of consternation. Um, uh, ideally, it would have been also uh, good to uh, discuss uh, what happened in Parliament today, but uh, we'll leave th leave that for another day, shall we? Um, so, therefore, this evening it's uh, Mr. Kusum Vijayatilaka, who is, of course, a foreign policy analyst. Very good evening to you, uh, Kusum, and welcome to the program. Good evening, Faraz. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be in the News Science Studio with you. Thank you. First Thank time. you very much. Um, now then, uh, tell us what, uh, how concerned should Sri Lanka be? Uh, in terms of what's happening. We have both our, um, our good friends, if you like, uh, and our neighbor, most immediate neighbor, India, who's not very pleased uh, with the potential arrival of this uh, satellite tracking vessel, um, supposed to be state-of-the-art, complete with five uh, satellite uh, dishes. Um, and they say that there's tracking space in satellite uh, movements. Um, and on the other side, we have uh, our other friends, China, uh, engaged in some form of uh, battle, if you like, uh, for the moment with words, uh, with the um, United States over the visit of uh, the, the speaker, uh, Nancy Pelosi, uh, to Taiwan. Uh, I think uh, first time in about 25 years that a senior uh, American elected official has uh, visited uh, uh, Taiwan. So, how sh concerned should Sri Lanka be? Uh, well, for us, if I can start with the uh, vessel mm. that's been uh, that's expected to dock in the Hamad report in August mm. uh, this month, um, the, it's important to first note that the Chinese have stated officially that the vessel is uh, what's called a research vessel. Mm. Now, you could uh, swap the word research for reconnaissance. Mm. Um, as you said, it's. Uh, one of the latest, it's probably the latest satellite ship um, yeah. that, the Chine, that the Chinese have. It's a fifth generation, apparently. Mm. Um, India, in fact, uh, raised this issue with Sri Lanka some time ago, and the Sri Lankan, well, the reports in India stated that the Sri Lankan Defense um, Administration said that there was no such ship, mm -hmm. which they later you know, walked back that comment and said, well, there is a ship, and it's mm. coming in for supplies and uh, replenishments. Mm. Uh, now, India, on the other hand, as you know, India and China have been escalating tensions. Uh, there was a skirmish in the uh, border of Ladakh last year. So since then and since before, India and China have had uh, numerous um, issues. Yeah. Uh, this is one such issue, and I think some of the Indian uh, military brass have already been on TV in India stating that there are something like three to four nuclear sites that are within the r the spying range of this alleged spy vessel. There are apparently three to four or even more uh, important ports which are within the same radius. So these are concerns that India have um, regarding the Chinese vessel in the Indian Ocean. Obviously, it's India's sphere of influence. Uh, mm. Given the friction that we have, that they have with China, it's, it's natural for them to be concerned. Um, I think um, on the Pelosi visit, I must uh, just uh, speak to our audience briefly just to mention that uh, Nancy Pelosi is actually second in line after the U.S. Vice President mm -hmm. um, as a Speaker of the House of Representatives. Mm. So she's a very powerful um, envoy, shall we, shall we say. Mm. Um, she is visiting Taiwan, she says, as part of a wider 
Asian tour, which is seen, I think, taken in Malaysia, Japan, Singapore, and, uh, and a few others. Mm. Um, as you said, she's already left, and while she was leaving, China had already um, carried out some military exercises in the East China Sea. Now, the mm. East China Sea, I just want to impress upon the audience, is one of the busiest sea lanes uh, in the world. Mm -hmm. And China have stated that they will be testing live ammunition, long-range live ammunition. Mm. So these are obviously not uh, explicit threats, mm. but they're saying, well, we're going to have these exercises near a very uh, busy sea lane. Uh, so let's hope for the best kind of thing. Mm. And it's, it's obviously the, the South China Sea and the East, uh, East China Sea are in contention for various mm. reasons as well. Um, so, I mean, if I could uh, take a little bit of uh, time, would you mind me just Please. speaking about <coughs> the Taiwanese um, uh, nation? Mm. Because it's a very interesting thing. I mean, even to call Taiwan a country is quite difficult. There's only 13 or 14 countries in the world that recognize officially diplomatic relations. Is with that Taiwan. because of uh, the overbearing Chinese influence. Yes, in fact, it's very interesting because uh, from the period between 1949 and 1971, mm. the United Nations actually recognized uh, Taiwan as as a country. Mm -hmm. The actual um, the actual definition of China, how how uh, China goes, is the People's Republic of China. Mm. Um, before the Chinese Revolution, mm. uh, between the 1910 and 1949, um, mainland China and Taiwan were both called the Republic of China. Okay. Now, after the Chinese uh, Communist Revolution, um, much of the establishment, the political nationalist establishment in China fled to Taiwan, mm -hmm. and now Taiwan is technically called the Republic of China. Right. So, um, Taiwan exists in a very interesting uh, geographic location. You mentioned Sri Lanka mm. and our geographic location in mm. the Indian Ocean. You'd say it's a strategically important island. Mm. You can take our strategic importance and multiply it by magnitudes of 10. Right. That's how important the Taiwanese island is okay. in the geopolitical scenario regarding the United States, China and India. Mm -hmm. And we can go into uh, why that is uh, a little late if you like. And of course, um, how, how will this, uh, the obvious question is, you know, how will it impact? Uh, we, it's easy to understand uh, the, the Chinese vessel coming here because on the one side we have China who's recently uh, announced uh, uh, that they will, uh, they will support us at IMF. Um, once de it's debatable how much of influence uh, China has um, within the IMF operation. And, uh, and then the, on the other side we have India, um, who is, uh, in very recent times have been uh, like they're the first respondent in terms of our troubles. And um, so it's not something that we can sort of ignore or scoff at. Uh, India, bottom line is India has come to our aid. Whether we like it or not, that is how it was. Uh, and that's how it is. So it's easy to understand the impact there. But uh, I get the feeling that Sri Lanka is being sandwiched between these two uh, powers um, for no earthly reason. Because if it is, uh, this vessel has its capability of tracking and uh, sort of snooping in, eavesdropping even, um, surely this 12 kilometers that side out, out of Hambantota is uh, international waters. So, and it then could also be argued that, you know, that, that technology will work out there. So what's the concern? Well, I think the concern is basically political rhetoric, um, Mr. Faraz, if I may, because at the end of the day, uh, China is a proud nation, India is a proud nation. Mm. They are both, um, let's say, fighting for influence in mm -hmm. this region. Mm -hmm. uh, China specifically has sought, even especially through Sri Lanka and even through the port city, mm. the port city has given a major Chinese corporation a significant footprint in India's traditional sphere of influence. Mm. So this is a, a big geopolitical game. And Sri Lanka, as you said, is, is sandwiched in between. Mm. Uh, a vessel entering the Hambantha report, uh, this was something that was discussed you know, when the Hambantha report was, uh, in fact, handed over. And 50% mm. of the operation was handed over to uh, uh, a Chinese company. Mm. The, the explicit conversation was had whether military ships were, would be able to dock at the Hambantha report. And mm. 
at the time, the Sri Lankan government, the Chinese government said, no, this is not, this is a commercial port, etc. Mm. And we must also emphasize that uh, China has maintained that this ship is also not technically a military ship, it is a, a research ship, so yeah. that's, that's their official line. Mm. Um, <coughs> if I may also just uh, pivot back to the Taiwan issue, because I think it, it links up in a way to the global economy, mm. where Sri Lanka and the United States are right now. Um, a lot of people perhaps don't realize that Taiwan is home to one of the largest companies in the world. Mm. Um, it's called the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation. It's called TSMC. It's the mm. number 10 company in the world by market capitalization. Mm. To give you some idea of how big this operation is, 90% uh, of the world's advanced semiconductors are produced in Taiwan, 90% of the advanced semiconductors. Okay. The advanced semiconductors, what, what makes them advanced is, f with my limited knowledge, I imagine it's the size. So mm. anything below five uh, nanometers, I believe, okay. is considered advanced technology. Now, the mm -hmm. Taiwanese semiconductor manufacturing technology is a report I saw a, a year ago, is five years ahead of Chinese technology. Okay. Just a few weeks ago, uh, the United States itself uh, approved uh, 50 billion dollars over five years for American manufacturing of semiconductors. Mm. Just to give your audience an idea of what semiconductors are, semiconductors are found in virtually everything that has a computer. Right. So you can imagine whether it's a plane, a car, a fighter jet, a ship, uh, your personal, your, your phone, your mm. lap, all of that requires semiconductors. Mm. And the rate at which Ch Taiwan has been able to develop its technology, mm. Beijing and Chinese companies uh, import something like 50% of its semiconductor requirement from Taiwan. The United States even more. Mm. For that reason, because of the supply chain issues we've been having around the world due to COVID and all the Ukraine issues, um, all the countries are reassessing uh, their supply chains. The United States, in fact, has done the same, as I said, $50 billion over five years for two or three companies to invest in semiconductor manufacturing in the United States right. so that they can move their dependence away from Taiwan. Now, one of the countries that the United States has invited to uh, the state of Arizona mm. is TSMC. Okay. And also to produce um, what they called advanced uh, semiconductors. Right. It just so happens that by the time the uh, advanced semiconductor factory is ready in Arizona, it will be to 2025, mm -hmm. by which time the advanced semiconductors would have reduced in size and only Taiwan has the capability to produce them. Right. So this is sort of um, an interesting way to build uh, your defenses mm -hmm. in this geopolitical era by making yourself absolutely essential mm. to the global supply chain and in the advancement of technology. technology. Mm -hmm. So that's what Taiwan has done brilliantly in it mm -hmm. because what's been stopping um, China for instance from invading uh, uh, Taiwan mm. one of the main reasons has been their dependence on Taiwanese industry uh, mm -hmm. as we even discussed um, the United States does not formally recognize relations diplomatic relations with Taiwan mm. no However, not Sri Lanka not Sri Lanka mm. but President Biden um, I think as soon as he came into office was asked the question directly would the United States intervene militarily if China were to invade Taiwan. Mm. And the president said yes without any hesitation that they're an ally. Mm. So it's quite interesting that officially, even, even the media in the United States mm. don't refer to Taiwan as, a, as an independent country because independence is not technically diplomatically recognized. Mm -hmm. But the US president uh, has, has officially said that uh, they're an ally and will uh, we'll protect them militarily. And so, uh, and so Sri Lanka, um, Neither does it recognize uh, uh, Taiwan as, a separ as another country, uh, but uh, neither has Sri Lanka been um, successful in uh, having uh, any significant investment uh, in terms of FDI from, from Taiwan. Yet, yeah, this is an interesting point you raised for us because actually uh, there are the number of countries that are able to queue up for business with um, Taiwan is very limited. Yeah. China, Sri Lanka, all, obviously because of our relationships and investments from China, we can't do that either. Mm. But there are numerous commercial and investment opportunities uh, for Sri Lanka and Taiwan. Mm. Uh, Taiwan is an extremely advanced nation. Yes, but I, I, I don't, don't you get the feeling that they are um, uh, they're hesitant in uh, bringing their investment here because I of uh, the fact that 
Sri Lanka uh, purportedly or so-called non-aligned status and yet they are steadfast? Yeah, I mean uh, our non-aligned status is quite similar to China's um, uh, foreign policy of non-interference, right? So if you believe that China is not interfering in global affairs, you might also believe that Sri Lanka is non-aligned. It, it really depends on how you look at it. <laughs> on, that, on that note, let's go for a quick break and take a peek at this evening's headline news from that wonderful News First primetime news team. We'll see you on the other side of the break, shall we? News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali. President invites parliamentarians to join the all-party government. Atite Pasakala, Ratavinue Nikata Equinakia, Vishwase Nutua Aradana Karano. President's message to the protesters. Samakami Aragala Karwant Kisidua Kareka Agatya Sidu Matamam Ida Den Nene. What happened at the Tea Party in Parliament today? Citizen journalists know your rights and limits. Samaj Madhya Jala Haraha, Puravasi Madhya Karane, Nyalena Oba, Danuat Biyayutu, Niti Me Ramu Alala, Sangvidhana Kerana, Vishesha Vedamulua, Agostu Hatanada, Adamalia Padijuana, Vimasim, Bidoy Hatahai, Tunsia Suatai, Visi Ekai Ekolaha. Organized by MIM, Maharaja Institute of Management. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali. And welcome back to Newsline Live. I'm in conversation with Mr. Kusum Vijayatilika, who's a foreign policy analyst, and we are discussing geopolitics and its impact, potential or otherwise, uh, on Sri Lanka. Uh, so tell me, Mr. Vijayatilika, what, what is the uh, situation for Sri Lanka? There's a viewer who sent us a question saying, isn't it a slap in the face? Uh, to char to India by permitting uh, this vessel into our, our port. Uh, having said that, there are others who are saying who are saying that this is a uh, innocent passage under maritime law, and you, you we must give them the right of passage uh, for replenishment or whatever it is to say. And in the absence of a state of war uh, uh, declared. Uh, then Sri Lanka is within its rights to say and consider the movement of this vessel as uh, indeed uh, one of innocent passage. Right. I mean, uh, I think there's no question that Sri Lanka is well within its rights to welcome this, uh, this ship on, uh, into the Hampantha report. Right. What obviously, as we said before, what complicates matters is that the Hampantha report has a significant Chinese footprint on it already. Hmm. What further complicates matters is that the ship is one of the most advanced uh, re research uh, vessels in the research world. Research in quotes. Research in quotes. Yeah. So these are all factors that are likely to obviously complicate this matter. It's not a simple f uh, case of us saying, yes, the ship has permission uh, to dock. But uh, certainly India's concerns cannot affect, at the moment, our relationship with China. As you know, uh, we need both nations uh, for our economic uh, Malay. So I, I think Sri Lanka has reacted to this in the only way it can, because there are very few options to us open. If China says there's a ship coming, um, even by the law of the sea, there's very mm. little uh, you can actually do about that. But you know, uh, Sri Lanka can't afford to uh, gamble either way. No, uh, it's not. Uh, it's at a status right now, even though uh, the um, today's uh, throne speech, uh, the president's speech, the in Parliament. Uh, made no mention of any immediate action plan for the recovery of Sri Lanka's economic crisis and the dollar crisis. Um, nevertheless, uh, it's mo even more important right now uh, to keep both sides happy 
uh, and that is both sides meaning uh, China on the one side and India and in its almost sort of proxy status as uh, the agent of uh, the United States, uh, the, the sort of night watchman if you like, um, to use cricketing parlance. So, so where, where does this all fit in? If, if I may actually give you a, a small comparison. Um, we're all familiar with Ukraine over the past several months. Indeed. Now, there are, there are some s interesting similarities between the relationship between Russia and Ukraine mm. and the relationship between China and Taiwan. Mm. Now, both are relatively smaller territories mm. uh, which, which used to be ruled by a much larger neighbor mm. in China's, uh, in Taiwan's case it was China and Ukraine's case it was Russia. Mm. There are cultural links, uh, language links, uh, uh, societal connections. So this is, uh, it's quite interesting in, in, in that sense that there's a major power like Russia and, and Ukraine and there's mm. a major power like, like China yeah. that now if you look at geopolitics, China has this um, a specific issue in terms of its coastline. It has one of the world's largest coastlines, some 15,000 kilometers where a lot of its trade um, and its export oriented manufacturing links up to the global supply chain. Now even though it's 14 or 15,000 kilometers worth of coastline, um, if you look at the map of China, you'll notice um, probably thousands of islands, some large, some small, uh, that are basically forming a sort of chain around mm -hmm. that coastline mm -hmm. and making navigation a little more complex. And what further complicates matters is that some of these islands are Japan, uh, Taiwan, uh, the islands of Borneo, Sumatra, the Philippines. Most of these countries, in fact, all of the countries I've mentioned, are American allies. Mm -hmm. So they've all got significant American footprints on them. Right. Now, if you can consider the Chinese issue with Taiwan, mm. what makes uh, someone, I remember in Foreign Policy magazine, noted that Taiwan might be the most strategically important island of the 21st century, mm -hmm. uh, simply because it is on one of these choke points. Now, it's, it's by American foreign policy designed that there, are, there is such a big American footprint around this Chinese coastline. Mm -hmm. It was actually called the, uh, the, f the island defense chain mm -hmm. uh, in the 1950s by the American foreign policy establishment. So mm. they did this very purposefully to contain Chinese trade. And China, on the other hand, if it can um, get around Taiwan someday, which is uh, the, even Xi Jinping himself has stated that he will someday uh, fight for the unification of China with Taiwan and that he still uh, reserves the right to employ force uh, to bring Taiwan into check. So someday the, the long-term plan might be for China to take over uh, Taiwan and then use their ports as basically opening up the greater Pacific Ocean mm -hmm. uh, for their shipping routes. So shipping routes have a lot to do with geopolitics and I think Sri Lanka that's where as you see Hambantara port uh, the China is building a network of ports around the country, including f as, as far out as uh, Africa yeah. and the state of Hormuz. So I think shipping lines, shipping lanes are a particularly important show point uh, in geopolitics. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where China and Taiwan uh, have a, a major say at the moment. So um, in terms of, uh, you know, Sri Lanka is, uh, uh, as we all acknowledge and know, uh, we are at the bottom of the can. Um, so, you know, we, we have to be, uh, we have to seize every opportunity because usually Sri Lanka never, uh, never fails to miss an opportunity. And so whatever opportunities we have, we need to, to grab it and hang on to it and develop it. Um, so where does this, these two, uh, areas of consternation. I mean, uh, as far as Sri Lanka is concerned, most p foreign policy experts in Sri Lanka would tell you that Sri Lanka shouldn't touch Taiwan with a barge pole. Mm -hmm. that's, that's simply what they say. They, say. they shouldn't touch Taiwan with a barge pole because the, our relationship with China is that important mm. and China is just that sensitive about the Taiwanese issue mm -hmm. that there's absolutely, I would say, less than 1% chance of Sri Lanka engaging with Taiwan significantly mm -hmm. but I have to tell you that um, uh, Taiwanese um, manufacturing industrialization and that high technology industries is exactly what Sri Lanka is lacking 
in mm -hmm. our economy. Our industrial base has been shrinking for quite some time. Mm -hmm. We have virtually no high technology exports. But of course, within that dynamic, we simply cannot um, approach uh, Taiwan for that kind of uh, technological sharing mm. because China would never allow it. Um, and so it, it's a no-no? It's a big no-no, yeah. Right. <laughs> and what about our neighbors now? They, they, they'll say to uh, our president, and historically, uh, Mr. Wickremesinghe has uh, enjoyed a very good um, relationship with India and they do hold him in, uh, uh, in some, uh, some esteem, uh, perhaps more than over here. But nevertheless, how will they view this? Will, do you think Mr. Modi will phone uh, Ranil and say, listen, uh, chum, uh, won't do. Tell, tell them to go bugger off and go, go and get your oil or your water. Uh, and in any case, we haven't got any fuel for ourselves. Well, what, what? I think the problem that both uh, President Xi Jinping and Narendra Modi both have the same problem is that the, there's an interdependency mm. of global economies now. Mm. So whatever people say, uh, aggressive uh, rhetoric we use against China, whether it's the United States or India, mm. there's a huge Chinese market for Indian business. It's the same way for the United States mm. and the same for, for China. Mm. I think just yesterday a very popular celebrity in the United States uh, apologized for calling Taiwan a country. Okay. So you can imagine just, uh, I, I remember one of the most famous basketball players in the United States had to apologize for making some reference uh, to, 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 to the uh, Jiangjing, uh, the captive, uh, the Muslim captive population. Oh. Uh, the alleged Muslim uh, captive population in China, he made some mention of that and then had to, had to apologize. That was LeBron James. Mm. So uh, you can see that even with, with popular culture, the hold that uh, economics and the Chinese economy has on the rest of the world. Mm. Uh, Taiwan is equally important in, ter in terms this of supply chains. This uh, is a, uh, sorry, uh, we, as we come towards the end, uh, this question is um, uh, from uh, one of our regular uh, viewers. Uh, saying, isn't all of this further complicated by Sri Lanka having given a comprehensive lease of the Hambantar port facility to the Chinese? I think um, the complications began long before uh, that agreement. Mm -hmm. The Chinese footprint in Sri Lanka has been growing, mm -hmm. and we should have recognized a little earlier on that we are in India's sphere of influence, and this is bound to lead to some contestations going forward. Mm. I think by the time we came to the, uh, leasing the lease agreement with the, uh, with the Magapur report, um, we were so far deep, and we actually, I think, during the Yapali regime, this was, we had, I think we virtually had to enter into this lease agreement. And if I'm not mistaken, the funds we received from China for this lease agreement, they weren't used uh, to pay back. I don't the think no. much of it was used to pay back the loan. You're Some absolutely of it went right. Into the uh, reserves. The, the, it was remitted to the Sri Lanka Port Authority, but this was then given to the uh, Consolidated Fund. Yes. And um, we'll have to do a forensic analysis to find <laughs> out what happened there. But enough of forensic analysis, uh, because, of course, that didn't get us anywhere with the bond scam. And I'm having serious doubts as to whether that will ever be resolved. But that's another story for another day. Kusum Vijayathilaka, thank you very much. Some of our uh, viewers have described this as a very educational half an hour. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Very thank much. you very much. And that's the way it was on uh, Newsline Live this uh, evening, where we had foreign policy analyst Kusum Vijayathilaka uh, joining us uh, for his take on what's happening in geopolitics. It's now time, of course, for a short message and then for the primetime news from the wonderful primetime news team at News First. Take care, have a great evening, and as always, God bless you all.